All right, there we one. Hope you're keeping safe out there. So, um, yeah, that last video I did about Marvel Legends for 2021 actually did really well. I was surprised at that. Not only that, but I already got one right. <laughs> Turns out the Maestro, yeah, that's getting released as a standalone deluxe figure. Pretty cool. Not only that, but they also have some leaks of a Fantastic Four Vintage Wave, which I'm definitely going to do a video about, and another Age of Apocalypse Wave, which I'm less enthused about. I bought the original Wave and sold it because it was like, oh, maybe the 90s weren't all that great, but uh, yeah. So anyway, I thought, well, seeing as that video did all right, let's try that again, see if I can get some more. So here we have Marvel Legends 2021, part two. Okay, so first up, a character I really love and I think needs a new figure, Beta Ray Bill. He is a great, classic, off-the-wall Marvel design. It, basically, alien, horse, skull face Thor. And he's marvellous. Um, he's a really great character. I recommend like, just looking him up. He's been on quite a few things, actually. Um, he was in like the Avengers Earth Mighty Earth's Mightiest Heroes cartoon. That was really good. That did his origins really well. And he was in uh, Planet Hulk, if you can remember that animated film. Or that animated movie. But he's really good. There was a recent figure of him. Um, only about a year or so ago. Which was alright. But it was his modern design. Which was okay. But I much more prefer his classic one. Which did have a figure. Actually, back in the day by Toy Biz. That was a good figure. I had it. I still own it, actually. It's still somewhere locked away um and it was okay I, it's still kind of passable I, the, maybe some more paint detailing but it's still a good figure but i think like a a new modern one maybe take what they did with that modern ver that modern costume version and apply that to the classic costume and i think that'd be a really great figure it's yeah so okay uh very well that's an asgardian figure so let's think of another asgardian figure actually let's go to something else i think about as well re-releasing exclusive figures like the SDCC exclusive figure of Hella re-release that because Hella is a beautiful design just from a comic book and costume design uh, point of view looks great name recognition I mean big villain from Thor 2 Thor Ragnarok can't go wrong with that um, the figure was really cool you can't pick it up nowadays for love nor money but you know re-release that I think it'd sell really well as part of a villain and yeah Nothing to do with the fact, you know, uh, how hot she looks in the movie. Um, and speaking of hot characters, <laughs> uh, how about the Devil's Daughter, Satana? Now, she's had a couple of different costumes, but um, just like Ella, she had an exclusive figure. Uh, the figure was based on her Thunderbolts costume, which is kind of like a all-in-one black suit with a uh, very revealing cutout in the middle. But the figure itself was really great. I really liked it. I didn't. I, well, I like the look of it. I've actually owned it. Couldn't couldn't track it down. Couldn't get my hands on it. Still can't. But the costume itself would look really cool. Oh, the figure itself. Sorry, it looks really cool. And maybe re-release would do really well. Also, because that figure really would also work well as the base for Lilith, Dracula's daughter, like a classic Marvel. Not really a villain, but like a classic Marvel horror character. Yet again, very skimpy design. In fact, actually. Yeah, her design is like 99% the same as this one they used for uh, Satana. Obviously just with a slightly different cape, head and some hands. But yeah, I think uh, yeah, if you, pick, if you release the figure, I'd definitely pick up two. One to keep her Satana, one to do a few modifications to make into uh, Lilith. I mean, yeah, I'd, uh, I'd definitely get my money on those two. Uh, um, um, okay, maybe something slightly less uh, skimply clad female orientated. Okay, I know. Another classic Thor villain, the Executioner. Uh, if you remember, uh, yeah, again from Thor Ragnarok, Carl Urban's character. Really good. Very, very classic Thor villain. Uh, really good because he is normally seen, well, he, he was normally seen with the Enchantress, who we've had a figure of, and he's actually a really good figure. Um, yeah, I think having him released to go alongside her, especially with like the uh, 80th, 80th anniversary Thor figure, they look really good together on the shelf. And yet again, as I banned... Uh, the name's out there, people know him from, I say, Thor Ragnarok, he's also been in, yet again, Avengers, Earth's Mighty Heroes. Good character choice, I think. Um, let's think. Uh, maybe walk, uh, go away from Thor for a bit. Okay. Uh, Fantastic Four villain. Uh, Diablo. 
Really cool costume design. Those classic like villainy colours of purple and green and black. Looks really cool. Very classic costume, very classic villain. Not that hard of a figure to make really. I mean it's maybe just like a basic male book or maybe that like intelligent male one they used for the leader and Reed Richards. New head, maybe a new chest piece to show off his or to replicate his sort of shoulder pads and cape lift. But yeah, it'd be really cool. Filling well with a Fantastic Four shelf, especially if we're getting like the Fantastic Four retro wave. I can imagine this guy maybe being like a, a single release figure in that. And maybe some more Fantastic... Actually, you know nothing about some more Fantastic Four villains? Uh, well, you know, not Fantastic Four. Fantastic Four member, a She-Hulk villain. Yeah, because we get that She-Hulk figure. Having a villain to go alongside it would really would look really cool. So, I know, Titania. Great female villain in Marvel. With a large Amazonian warrior. Came about in, I think it was the Secret Wars. Doctor Doom needed some like reinforcements. So he found two women, female volunteers. Gave them powers. One became Titania. The other, I think, became Volcana. It was kind of cool. Really strong. Super strength. Um, sort of like Thor level strength-ish. Or like high level strength. Um... Married, strangely enough, to the Absorbing Man in the comics. He ain't another character we've had to figure of. They'd be really cool together on the shelves as a married couple. You don't see that very often. And she'd fit in a lot of um, like villainous collections. Because she's kind of like a like an all-purpose villain. You could have a fight at... Oh yeah, sorry. <clears throat> you could have a fight in the Fantastic Four, the Avengers, Iron Man, that's it, She-Hulk. A nice, good all-rounder. And, yeah, very round. <laughs> um, how about... I think of another villain. Okay, maybe it's slightly controversial with the design, but Umbaku the Man Ape from the Black Panther comics also appeared in the Black Panther movie as well. It was really good in that film, probably one of the best things in it. But the classic costume, I don't know. Well, I don't know if the classic costume is PC or not. It's one of those weird ones. I'm never quite sure if it's like a PC acceptable costume or not. It's just a large African fella in a white gorilla skin costume. I think that's fine. But it kind of twinges a little bit in my mind that says, "Is there something slightly non-PC about this? I need to, I need to be aware of." But if if it is a fine costume to do, or no, if it is a perfectly acceptable one, I think it's actually a really cool design. You could use something like the Sasquatch or the Wendigo figure. That's got a lot of the detailing there, like the large frame, the fur, or you can just use something else like a larger male book. Because he's a, he's a he's like a large man in the costume in the comic books. He's He's shown to be like seven or eight foot. He's a, he's a big, imposing character. I think it'd be really cool because I mean, we've got a lot of Black Panther figures, uh, in comic book Black Panther figures, but not many villains outside of I think Claw. That's the only one. Uh, and having Umbaku, the Man Ape, would be really cool. It fits in well with like his first appearance with uh, the Black Panther's first appearance in comic books. He's also yeah again he's appeared in cartoons and stuff. And as I said, the Black Panther car uh, Black Panther movie he was in that and he was brilliant. Okay, and here's something completely off the wall. A couple of years ago, Marvel did an event called Infinity Warps, where effectively they folded the universe in half and fused every character with one other character. And I actually really liked it. You had some really, really great things that came of it, like um, they fused Moon Knight with Spider-Man to get the Arachnite, which was really cool. Iron Man with Thor to get the Iron Hammer. Beautiful art, beautiful design. Ghost Rider with the um, Black Panther to get the Ghost Panther. That was amazing. Even like 2099 versions of characters or just weird combinations. And yeah, okay, there were some very weird combinations. Uh, yeah, I, I don't know how to describe this one. This is just weird. But they were really great designs. In fact, I think two of them would make really great figures. They, see, they, they sort of like combine the Fantastic Four with each other. So you add. The Terrific Two. They combined Reed Richards with Sue Storm to create, uh, I think it was like Mr. Invisible. So it was like a, a blonde haired younger Reed Richards who could both stretch and become invisible and do force fields. And Hot Rocks. It was like a fusion of Ben Grimm and um, Johnny Storm, the human torch and the thing. He was like a gigantic, well, no, a, a thing sized um, version of, the, well, Basically the thing, but on fire, is the best way to describe it. But it looked really cool. And I can honestly say they'd be really easy to make in toys, because all you'd do is, you'd re-release the two figures you've already got, the thing and Mr. Fantastic, make the thing from semi-translucent, 
orange, the oh, with a dry brush to show off like cooling rock or hot rock, sorry, with some flame effects. And for the other one, it's just the Mr. Fantastic toy you've already got, but make the stretchy limbs that it comes with translucent. And then jobs are good. And I think they'd actually make really cool figures. I'd definitely buy them. I think a lot of the figures, a lot of the designs in Infinity Warps would look really good as toys. Especially ones, I say, like Black Knight, Ghost Panther, uh, Weapon Hex, which is kind of a cool one. Um, they're all really cool. Even like, uh, what's his name? Oh, um, I think it's like Stephen Rogers, Soldier Supreme, or was it? Was it Steve Strange? Also, Doctor Strange and Captain America was a really cool fusion. And yeah, just, a lot of them I think would be really cool. So yeah, anyway, those are like my ideas. Hopefully, some of these, if not a couple of them, might get made into toys. I kind of hope so, especially like the Infinity Warp stuff and Beta Ray Bill. But yeah, that's it. And as always, folks, stay safe, stay sane, and I'll see you all next time. Ta-da!